Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Make Simple. In this video, I'll be explaining in depth what is the gas turbulence microsolver, its main settings and how to use a field to control the intensity of the turbulence. Ok guys, here we have a really basic setup in Pyrosha, some temperature and some density. So let's go ahead and create gas turbulence, hit enter and now we can connect this node into the second input of the Pyrosolver. And what the gas turbulence is basically doing is creating some noise in the velocity field so everything looks a bit more random and chaotic. So I'm going to go and change the scale to something higher, to 2, let's say. This is going to be the intensity, how much turbulence I want on the simulation. And if we hit play, we uh, already see that we are creating some random motion, some noise on the, on the smoke. By the way, we have a, a bit more interesting end result compared to the one to the previous one that was like pretty flat. So let's start playing with some of the parameters in the settings tab. Uh, the scale and the switch size are going to be the most important parameters in my opinion, the ones you're going to be changing more often. So let's go first and uh, go into the visualization tab to visualize the turbulence to see what is happening uh, under the hood and also uh, lower the smoke density so we can see a bit better what is happening with the noise pattern. So if we hit play, you can see how we're creating some uh, noise inside the, the smoke. Uh, we have a really interesting noise pattern and it's going to create the chaos and random on, in the motion. Uh, the scale, as I said, is going to be super important. It's going to be the intensity. So if we go to a really low value, now you can see the intensity uh, is going to be lower. Uh, same as we go, let's say 10 is going to be way higher, right? So basically the noise pattern is going to stay the same. It's just going to be the intensity what is changing. So if we now hit play with a value of 10, we can see that we are adding a lot of noise into a simulation, really creating a lot of chaos. Uh, so I want to go back to one. And now you can see we are creating less way chaos in the simulation. So in this case, I'm going to go back to three so we can actually see what's going on. And for this example, I think a value of 3 is going to work uh, pretty well. But again, you're going to have to play with this depending on your simulation and your goals. So next uh, setting is going to be the switch size. This is going to be uh, the size of the noise pattern. So if we go to a value pretty low, like 0.2, we're going to have a, a high frequency noise. And if we go into, let's say, value of 10, we're going to have a low frequency and a big a, a size on the noise pattern. Again, you can play with this depending what you are looking for. In this case, let's try a value of 3 and let's hit play to see what we can get. Let's display again the density field. And now you can see that the overall uh, motion is changing a lot since we are uh, creating some noise in a bigger scale. The overall shape is going like everywhere, looks more like a magical effect. And again, depending on the size or, and the scale of your effect, you're going to have to play with this. Uh, to fit your needs. Again, maybe we can try something pretty low. And in this case, we are not creating too much breakup, probably because we don't have enough voxels. So let's go and try 0.5. And now we can see that we are creating some breakup on the and some noise on the overall motion, but we are still are keeping the, the overall direction of the effect. So we, you have to be careful and set up this properly because it, you might change a lot uh, the overall shape. Again, now we went back to a bigger size on the switch size and now it's getting again a bit too crazy, uh, at least for my goal in this case. Uh, now you can see that smoke is going basically everywhere. So for the rest of the parameters, we have some options. We have grain. In this case, this is going to create a more detailed noise pattern and if we go uh, to a lower value it's going to look smoother so uh, you can play with this uh, it might change a bit your end result then we have the pulse length is going to be how fast the noise pattern is going to be changing frame to frame so if we go to a higher value it's going to be changing pretty fast and if you go to a low value it's going to be a bit slower the seed is pretty straightforward. It's basically the initial offset of the noise. The attenuation is going to be how fast the, the intensity is going to decay. 
and then we have the influence threshold and the turbulence. The turbulence is going to be how many layers, how many levels of uh, noise is going to be applying. Usually between two and three, I think, is more than, than enough. So feel free to play with this. Finally, we have the influence threshold. This is going to be controlling where are we applying this noise pattern. In this case, uh, it's going to be in values when we have more than this density. Uh, so usually by default works pretty well. And you can change which field are you using for, the, for this threshold. So if we go to bindings, we can see that we are using the density field. And let's say we go and try a really high value. Now we're only going to be applying this noise pattern only where in areas where we have more than 0.8 of density so as you can see we are losing some of the turbulence especially on the edges so you can play with this value usually again the the standard the, the default value works pretty well but if you have something really specific we are working on as you can see now it's only affecting the the center of the simulation where we have like those really high density values so if we go back to the default now we're going to be applying you can see the difference uh, we're only applying when we have like a high density values uh, compared to the default and the and the 0 0.01 value now we are applying basically everywhere where we have density in the control settings tab we can use a field just to multiply the intensity of the overall effect so we're going to go and enable the control field. In this case, we're going to be using the speed. So we need to first go into the Pyre Solver and under the simulation tab, uh, enable the uh, calculate speed field. And now we can go back and type speed. So we can use how fast the smoke is moving just to multiply the intensity of the effect. The control influence is going to be saying how much of this control field we want to use. We want to multiply uh, and blend with the original intensity. In this case, we want to kind of take over uh, the intensity. So we're going to be setting a value of 1. Next two parameters, they're going to be pretty important. In my opinion, we have to set up this range correctly. So let's start with 1 and 4. So we can explain what basically is happening under the hood. So for this example, what we're basically saying is that if the speed in this case is less than the mean value, in this case going to be 1, so uh, the intensity is going to be multiplied by 0. So we're not going to be applying any turbulence uh, in the simulation in areas when the speed is less than 1. And let's say we have areas when the speed is greater than 4, this is my max value. In these areas, we're going to be applying uh, the full intensity, so we're going to be multiplying the intensity by 1. And within this range, uh, the intensity is just going to be mapped. So if we have a value, let's say a speed of 2.5, in this case, the intensity is going to be multiplied by 0.5. So we're going to basically be applying half of the intensity we set up on the main settings. So in this example, to know how fast the smoke is moving, we can go to the smoke object and on visualization, we can enable velocity and then go uh, to the velocity tab. And by default, the visualization range is going to be zero to one. So basically everything moving faster than one is going to be red. So we can start playing with this to see what are the, the, the fast moving areas in this simulation. And we can also play with the mean value just to start kind of isolating this range where we are going to be applying the, the noise. Again, this is just for visualization purposes, but it's going to give us like a, a good point of reference to then uh, try some of this value if we want to apply uh, the turbulence in areas where maybe it's moving faster than 10, then we're going to start applying the noise pattern and the turbulence in, in those areas. And now back into control settings, we can use those values uh, as reference and start playing from there. So again, let's say I want to only start applying uh, some of the intensity uh, once we hit 25 of speed. Uh, if we have less than 25 of speed, we're not going to be applying any 
uh, turbulence in this case. And now you can see how we are isolating the noise pattern only into the high speed areas. And this is commonly used in explosions uh, where you want more intensity in the beginning when the explosion is moving pretty fast. And then as it's slowing down, uh, you get less turbulence. So just to finish up this tutorial, something that's pretty common is to work uh, maybe with two or three turbulence uh, so we can uh, set them up in different switch size and intensities so we can create noise in different uh, sizes and, and levels. So we can create a merge node, connect this to the first gas turbulence and if we go to the switch size again we can start with one in a higher switch size so we create some a noise in a, in a lower frequency and then again we have to play with the scale this is going to be the intensity uh, and we want to again create some nice uh, turbulence around this shape uh, in a bigger scale and once you're happy and you finish setting up this first gas turbulence we can create the second one connect to the merge and go lower on the switch size to create some detail in a higher frequency Typically, when you are working in a smaller switch size, you're going to be going a bit higher on the intensity just to create some breakup on a smaller scale. Uh, and again, once you finish uh, setting up the second one, we can go back and uh, activate the first one and see how they are working together. So if we go to Karma and I did three cache, uh, one with no gas turbulence, this is going to be the, the, the original a result so we're gonna snapshot that uh, that cache then we can switch to a second cache this one has two layers of gas turbulence and you can see it's already looking way more uh, organic more realistic it's creating really nice uh, shapes and, and details on, on the smoke and then we have the third cache this is two layers of gas turbulence, but I also added one gas disturbance. Uh, you can check out one of my tutorials on the gas disturbance, uh, but it's gonna be pretty helpful, the gas disturbance, to create a fine detail in a really high frequency and try to keep the overall shape of the effect. So if we go ahead and compare the three renders, uh, we can see a huge difference, the first one, with no micro solver, the second one we already have a way more interesting result and the third one we have even more detail when we combine the gas turbulence with the gas disturbance so guys thank you so much for watching that's it for today i hope you like it and i will see you on the next one